you got green screen. I sort of, I need to get, wow. Oh, I like the leg. That's cool. But I want to get the video off. So how, how do you make that? You know, you can, you can add in any image, right? I guess we're both using stock images, which is a bit weak, but. Totally. I liked, um, I liked Sam last time had. Yeah, if you put the green one that it waves in the background, it's more living. Do you know how to change it? If you go to, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I like just a regular, right? And just, I'm not backlit. Cool. There we go. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to catch up with you. <laughs> Lots going on. Do you want to go first? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, are we recording? Are we on? Are we online? Yeah, oh, we are. Okay. Um, so. Oh, I just feel like I've had this emergence of like comprehension of how I relate with myself in terms of Jordan Stallman is Lila and Emilio, which means like Emilio's like this and Lila's like this. And we interact in various different ways. And also, so basically I have like these islands of consciousness that, that I can perceive myself in, in these frameworks. And I can teleport from island to island, from perception point to perception point. And I'm noticing that in myself and it keeps life so exciting because it's like, I feel this, I feel this powerful essence of who I am shining in this particular um, direction. Like maybe I'm feeling really playful and fun and, and free and that, and I'm rolling with that and I'm enjoying that. I'm playing with it like a playground. And then it kind of ex, it, um, extends its, uh, its warranty, I suppose. And at the, at the time where it's like, I'm ready for something new, a whole new world pops up and it's like, it's more fierce now. So the playful goes into this fierce and then I'm rolling with that. And then the fierceness goes into like this, like spooky kind of creepy world. And that's really exciting. I love this journey. And then the creepy world after going into the shadows and whatnot comes back into like this tantric experience of self. And it's like creating these different cycles that just spin or like life just rotates around and I'm always being caught and I'm always um, stepping into these rooms and defining them with everything that I am shining my light completely in this direction. And then I move to the next room and then do the same thing there. And then every time I come back to a room, it's only my passion about being playful that was creating in the playful room. So I wasn't trying to, when I'm stepping into the more fierce, passionate version of myself, I'm not worried to try and like fit that into the playfulness. I just get to have that when I want that. And I get to have the spookiness where I want the spookiness. And I get to have the tantra when I want the tantra. And just like this experience. And it's just this like potency of just defining the aspects of yourself without needing to do everything all at once just being who you are in the moment as the moment as yourself uh, without oh what about the business well there's somebody else that's going to handle the business if that's not your passion i want to build sets right now and build props i can totally do that because that's where i'm passionately driven to and i know that maybe in an hour maybe in a day maybe in a week this business side is going to step in and they're going to want to do social media and selling things and and all Go, like comprehend like that but that's totally not where i am in and i don't want to do that right now and i don't have to i get to just be me now and allow the future to be the future and i'm not trying to like um do somebody else's job for one it would take away from my pleasure and second it would take away from their pleasure because i'm gonna like half-ass do a job where they could come in feeling refreshed and just do the whole thing themselves in a really in, in their passion and light. So just having these definitions of what I'm creating in my life is allowing me to experience my wholeness and it really expand in all directions. 
and feel at the center of my being. And that is so secure and, 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 and safe. And it's a sanctuary. And it's like looking out at a landscape of my life, of all the dreams that I want to create and seeing, they can all fit together because I'm not trying. I can just relax into, into being myself and know that my passion is my passion. My dreams are my dreams. They're not just random um, passing thoughts. This is what makes my, my heart alive. This is where my drive is. And my wildest dreams are really, you know, the arrow that's like directing. This is where your life was intended to go, following your passion. And yeah. So just allowing myself to really feel the calling, the resonance, the what calls my voice and just, you know, not judging it. Like if, if you know, maybe this, this passion, maybe there's something in, in this room, in the, in the playful room, let's say, that kind of makes this part nervous over here. This part's kind of like, judging that part but it doesn't have any right to judge you don't have any right to judge yourself from across the landscape of your being because this person gets to live or this part of you gets to live their passion and this part of you gets to live their passion and all together they work because you allow yourself to be who you are mm. yeah so it's just been a, a very beautiful awakening of how I can just live my dreams in the most, all my dreams, exactly like everything that excites me is just the natural order of how my life should unfold if I'm true to my passion and true to my heart and just follow that road. Mm. Well, I think with the, um, the amount of time you have to yourself, the personal space, and that you're not really being affected by anyone. So you're getting to the truth of your own inner world and you've, you've been structuring it in such a way that matches right? all your multidimensional needs. And I think the, whether it's called a challenge point, I think it's when we move from these spaces and then we have to start interacting with others. <laughs> In different contexts then <laughs> it doesn't all you know we may bring a fierce person out in a situation that it, it, it isn't warranted I, I'm not saying that that'll happen with you but I'm just I just find that the the ideals that we have don't I mean probably your situation will be different but it, it doesn't always fit with the interact where other people are at mm -hmm. You know, and, and it, it, I guess it, it just, again, depends, right, on, on where, you know, you've probably got certain parts of yourself that are going to come out in different contexts. And then it's your, not quite conversational kung fu, but you're, you're shifting to, you know, either be passive or aggressive or wh whatever are your methodologies of interacting with others, right? But I think in terms of the filming, in terms of you being in your own studio and you being able to capture because that's the great thing about you filming you is you can self-direct and you can you can bring out all these different aspects and then layer them into all these different shows that that, that you're planning and um i think it's i think every artist needs a lot of time by themselves you know a lot of time by themselves to create exactly what they want to create seems to me over the last few months that's what you have right mm -hmm. very much yeah a lot of time just to dedicate and to you know what i need what i need in life what i need to create and and who i am yeah and i think you have to do that before connecting with others because then we get so influenced by others and we change i don't know about you but i change around others i i depending on how much they allow me to be me. And I know that may sound a bit weak ass, but certain people either dominate the space or they have a certain way of being that doesn't pull me out. I just stand back and observe, especially if it isn't two way and it's just sort of them just dominating. Mm -hmm. 
but some people they want to bring it out in people right they, they or they they know how to take up enough space but not all the space and i think there's that balance point right yeah. where a lot of times we won't interact because the group's in a certain way or the situation's in a certain way and so we don't give any of ourselves and then in other situations maybe we give too much of ourselves and we, we take up all the room and space depending because i think every artist if you're a musician at some point you want to be on the stage you want to be the you know the performer totally. and sometimes we're we're just working with others and we're in the background and sometimes we're just in the audience you know so i i think if we don't get what we really need as an artist in terms of the, the the stage to perform then that's what's sort of like disappointing or discouraging to artists you know you, you want the setup right for you to share really what you want to share and i think what you've done you know with, with so much detail is structured your inner world and align it with your passion and and where you want to focus and, and now if i guess right you'll be led to those situations where those things are going to occur that you are designing and the people that you need to connect with synchronization is going to be so much stronger mm -hmm. because, of, because of all that you know work that you've done i know yeah i feel that in in the depth in the detail um and that's what like that's integrity you know that's the foundation that's strength it's not like you know oh i have this idea suddenly um it's got any idea that stems or sparks it comes from a deep foundation and any point that i focus on now has the the history of how much self-discovery i've uh, like i've grown conscious awareness of the roots of of what of my truth of who i am and so when i have an idea it's i know that this is this is it this isn't like it's just an idea this is the idea if i record a piece of music you know um i'm listening to that music i'm like this is this is it this isn't like you know it's i can just have so much more respect and appreciation for for what's being created and in that way recognizing that in other people as well but right now focusing a lot on just creating this understanding of self in terms of how to recognize my myself how to recognize my identity and in that way how to recognize a human identity and passion in what we're conveying in what information we're exchanging and how we're exchanging information and getting in touch i was singing recently in the yesterday in the car with my sister and um, singing to some music and all of a sudden this thing happened where i i shifted from singing the words and I started singing the meaning. And it's interesting because when you try to sing the words, like on the surface, you just try to sing, you can fuck it up. Like you can like, oh, my voice cracked. Like, oh, I didn't do a very good job of that. But if you're singing the emotion, if you're expressing what, what the words are pointing to, instead of trying to reenact the words, but you actually find what the author, the artist was, where they were coming from and you find that in yourself and you just express in any way from that point it's it, it might come out different than the artist but it's the it's the same um the resonance it's your your mouth your words your expression um take the shape of your expression of that idea do you understand where i'm what I'm yeah doing? i mean it's so frustrating yeah I mean, it's such a, what would be a good metaphor? Um, I don't know. Maybe rowing on the ocean in a rowboat versus being a whale in the depths of the ocean and moving through water. Um, totally. Yeah. In terms of the strength and the power of like the conviction and the connection. And the depth of the feeling and the connection to it and the, the deeper meaning yeah i mean you know you could just tell in some singers right there every piece of them is involved mm -hmm. and, it, and it moves the soul and other singers 
you, know, you barely can listen to them. And sometimes it isn't, you know, it isn't just the voice, it's the, it's the depth of their being that's participating in it. Absolutely. Yeah, so as I'm exploring that in myself, I'm starting to recognize that in when I'm seeing others speak or sing or express, I'm seeing where they're coming from in, in their conscious consciousness, in their subconscious, and that and I'm able to actually distinguish that bridge of how aware they are of the depth that they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you're able to actually absorb all the information from the depth. Um, but they might, the person that's conveying it might not understand, like the level of truth that they're conveying in their mm -hmm. speech. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's, you know, kind of when they say you were when two or more of you were together in the depth of the spirit, like there's, there can be so much more. You know, there is such a spectrum towards how much connection that can happen between humans and how much can be conveyed and how much value is there in the moment and how much are appreciating the value and how much are conveying the value. But I, I think it's very important for, you know, I think, I don't know, I just sense you teaching younger people to get in touch with their creative passion. You know, that there's, there's a lot of teenagers that they'll never listen to a guy like me, anyone over 30 is old, right? And, you know, you're at a very prime part of your youth where you're way ahead of your time in terms of your maturity. But, and you're still able to reach the kids. And I think those teenagers and even the youngers in that need, you know, teachers like you to, to at that right moment, help them step into that creative zone without fear and with support. And that I think that you, you would do that, you know, in such a beautiful way with people. So I don't know if, if you're doing that yet or you want to. But. I'm excited for that. And I'm also excited to basically have a mirror and I can like have, have a mirror. And when, when the camera's like facing me, I can like hold up this mirror and shine and, and see your face through all the video production that I'm doing. So I can say, right. So yeah, I'm pretty cool. I'm this rock star. Cool. But check out the fucking magic wizard over here. Like, you know, <laughs> that's like the funnest. <laughs> and I, I think it's, Anything creative, right? Anything. I, I was doing a, a video with Camille once that we were at this documentary school and I asked the sound guy what he thought. <laughs> and I brought him into the, the conversation and Camille's going, he's the sound guy, why are you talking to him? And, and to me, it's bring everybody in. Like, why does the sound guy have to sit there with a pole for a half hour and not participate in the conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, there's yeah. so many, you know, whether it's the frog in the pond or a bird coming by or like the universe is always speaking and communicating. And, and a lot of times we just, our focus of attention is so human centered or other centered or ourselves centered that we miss the beautiful messages that are around us all the time. Um, so guess what? Like on my front, there's, there's like this, like today, I might have spoken in three different conversations of three different groups that might want to create shared knowledge communities, each in a different way. One person who's got a podcast of 200 people and he's wondering how to connect all the people in it. Another group in England that actually have 144 people they've had for two years brought together from 15,000 people. And they're just at a point in their time where they want to learn to collaborate more and, and uh, me and this new originator I met, Darmenda, I pitched him on the SKC and the Inflow Matrix, and he's looking at gene keys and his uh, ability to read where individuals are at. And, mm -hmm. You know, and this is just like two, like, you know, there's so many people who want a new paradigm, you know, who want to leave what we've been in. And, you know, it's just going to get more and more and more as, as this old paradigm sort of collapses on itself and keeps on, you know, trying to impose its ridiculous sort of draconian measures of stupidity that, you know, they, they think this is the way to do it because they've always done it this way. Yeah. But, but it just, it comes across like as morons. Anyone who supports anything they're doing right now comes across as morons, in my opinion. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And that divide, you know, the divide is getting so big between those people that have remedies and solutions for the new paradigm and those people who are trying to support this crumbling. I know, it's so like eroded and it makes no sense. And people are like out in the streets saying, we want change, we don't want change. And who are you talking to? Who are you talking? You're, you're <laughs> blaming the government for doing such a shitty job and then you're telling them to fix your problems. You're doing a shitty job, fix our problems. Like, that just don't make any sense. You've got these, like, 10 people in a room and a 1,000 people in the streets, and the 1,000 people are saying, you guys are doing a shitty job. Make change for us. Like, we need to be out in those, in the, where the protests are. We don't need to be holding up signs. So we can make really cool signs, too, of our own. But we need to have Inflamatrix tables there. Like, that's just the thing, is we need to not get hundreds of people in the streets to just um, hold up signs and be angry, even peacefully, you know, expressing what's not working. We need people to sit down in smaller groups, not a big mob with one person with a megaphone. We need everybody in smaller groups conveying what, what's, what, they, what they want, like what they're passionate about, what's not working for them, and come up with solutions in these pods, and these pods, and these pods, and then the pods meet, and they, they convey their intelligence. And it's like, that's how we need to come together. And this mm -hmm. has been all your work, is like watching you and, and how you created the tables, is um, to be able to have multiple people sitting at the tables and then them shining their light and their consciousness into the center and synergizing. This is the synergizer, synergizing that consciousness into a potent intelligence that we can own and share and exchange and grow from. Yeah, <laughs> I like that one in the background. I translate, yeah, I mean, it's funny, you know, to be, um, mm. to be in a situation now where like it's irrefutable that the tools are necessary and to, to sort of have worked on them so long and been in situations where people are completely indifferent, have no interest and no curiosity, no, no curiosity. And now I'm starting to talk to people that are like in a situation where they need the help. They're very interested and they're very mm -hmm. curious because they understand sacred geometry. They understand we're here for spiritual growth. Like these are people from around the world who've been, you know, in the same situation working for 20, 30, 40 years on something. And all of us have come to the same conclusion pretty much that you can't try to fix an old system that is not fixable mm -hmm. you can't and the more time and effort you put into it the more you sort of waste your time and then you realize okay well we need to build something here how are we going to do it we can't use these old outdated everythings and so it's you know it's the pioneers it's the inventors it's the artists that are going hey man try this out you know because they put the time in to, to look at a design for something that takes into account what they've been in, takes into account the ideal, takes into account the masters that you've studied and your own intuition and your own guidance and your own feedback from you know, those that are on a similar path. And then, you know, as you know, remedies, remedies are, are nonstop. Mm -hmm. You know, once you look in the right direction and once you open you know, to your own really inner guidance, everyone's a genius and it's just they no one's reminded them or told them and then they got shut down in school somehow and then they're sort of plodding along in a make-believe world that they don't even want to exist in and it's very sad it's very sad totally hey okay can i show you something cool yeah i've been spending so much time on the computer you know and it for years, I've been not wanting to. Oh, I think you got to turn off the background for this one. Holy yeah, well. Oh, but I saw this picture on Facebook. I love it. I love it. It's, it's amazing. Okay, let me just get rid of this. Building off of oh, the right, table. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you got this thing. 
So you can kind of, yeah, you can kind of see. Oh, wow. I could not see that in the picture. You got to make a better Facebook post about it. My so, God. I mean, it's, you got a mini tetrahedron in there, and then you got a bigger one, and then you got the big one. So it's basically three tetrahedrons, right? Totally. And so the one, the four, and the 20, the one planetary guardian, the team of four, and then the team of 20 is all in this structure. You know, it's like four here, each four has another four. So this is a team of four. This is a team of four, but here's kind of like the leader of this team. Here's a team of four over here, team of four, and a team of four. Okay. Uh, that's 16. Well, that and then there's four here, that's 20, and you kind of have a catalyst sort of person or main coach in the, in the middle. So basically, oh. the leads and the planetary guardian grows. It grows along these sacred i mean this is it's sacred geometry but it, it's like it's the basic form of the universe it's the mm -hmm. first form you have a point then a line then a triangle with three points and the fourth point makes the first shape right totally. it's basic stuff and what something that's really interesting is you got i don't know if you can see but if you if you take a tetrahedron and then you make a tetrahedron in each corner so there's four yeah. tetrahedrons. This is a different way of doing than the other one. And then there's another tetrahedron in this corner. It creates actually a, a pyramid, and I, a, a double pyramid. Here's the, the base, here's the point. It, there's this hidden pyramid in the tetrahedron. So you got these four tetrahedrons that are taking up the space. When you do yeah. that, it creates this can you see it? It's a four-sided pyramid, and yeah. it's like with two sides. Yeah, with like a polarity. And so it's like there's a hidden. I think it's called an icosahedron, but there's a hidden double pyramid, and they say that all the pyramids have another pyramid energetically underneath, or maybe even physically. So you don't have just a pyramid; you have another pyramid underneath. And again, it's, it's kind of like the way the universe works is, you know, hidden within the tetrahedron is the next shape or another shape. Yeah. Totally. And that pyramid is, is you know, well-renowned for a type of energetics that it creates. So it's, it's, it's just, again, it's like when you use the sacred geometry and then you put, put language on it or people, you're, you're doing like what molecules do. They configure. Absolutely, yeah. And so then they create, then if you're taking your gifts from the gene keys or from any other methodology to identify gifts, but the, the gene key seems to be the best one, you then, because like I'm getting some feedback from this new friend of mine, an originator, who's giving me feedback on my life purpose and my life work, number 55 and number 34, and shows me my, my shadow side, and then shows me my gift and my, my city. And so then, you know, I, I, I've been studying it for years, but, you know, it, sometimes it takes someone else who's, who understands it more to really penetrate you with what it is. And I don't know if you've gone to genekeys.com and put in your, your thing yet. I've read it before, yeah. Have you done that or no? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's just, it's a whole vast field of knowledge to explore, mm -hmm. to, to see, you know, why you are a certain way and then with others, you know, how you interact or don't interact. And so again, bringing in these, these higher teachings and then so each one of these people, because there's 20 people here, each one of these has gifts on the gene keys and shadows and, and we're all interacting, I think, unconsciously together. And I, I just, you'll get this, I just recently began, like I've been working on it a bit, but I went back into the website, The Very Secret Plan. I'm finally putting together <laughs> the actual freaking web TV show that I said we're all doing, but I never showed anyone because now I got so much content but it's all on YouTube spread out. So now I'm taking, and I take, I've chosen 20, 20 characters. So I've got 20 in the secret plan and I've been telling them, they know, you know, and you know, 19 of them don't know they're in a plan. You know, <laughs> yeah. 17 of them don't give two shits about what I'm doing. I mean, I know I'm being harsh, but I'm. It's, I'm no, I, I, I get what you mean, totally. 
<laughs> I've, I've freaked some people out before because I'm like, like they'll say some, they'll say, oh, and I do this and this and this, and it just like I feel this resonance. Oh my gosh, we're gonna work together, and we're gonna build these companies, and we're gonna make this show. And sometimes I say that, and they're like, what are you, what are you talking about? I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, I know, and it's funny. Like no one, no one kind of wants to be in someone else's plan, especially like if they look oh, at yeah. me, and I'm not. Let's say the whole world isn't going. Hey, look at Captain Sweet. Look at Elijah. What he's doing? Like no one is. Like they look at my Facebook stream and go, no one is actually paying attention to this fucker. Like, <laughs> like no one's, no one's like. And I mean. To me, again, that's part of the comedy of like when you really know you have something, it doesn't matter. Like you know, you mm -hmm. can see it, and whether they they see it or not, it doesn't matter because you're tracking your own story, and all these pieces of the puzzle are coming in, and and then the bigger pieces are coming in, and this person has 140, you know, and you're going, holy crap, like, what? <laughs> you know, but no one. Like I'm trying to say it in Facebook, like I'm getting a lot more voluminous in, 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 in the videos of going, look, this is what is occurring. Like, and again, part of the humor to me is realizing, okay, well, and they're not getting it, but believe me, like <laughs> one day, whether you're, whether you know it or not, you know, whether you want it or not, this plan is freaking going, you know, high steam. <laughs> You know, and anyone close to it is going to be <laughs> totally yeah i feel that too um one of the magics that i made a long time ago when i was a lot younger um i said you know if you tell somebody you you want to do this outrageous plan with them they'll generally like reject it or they'll say yeah but it'll you know that they don't get enthusiastic about it but if you say it's for a show then everyone's like oh my gosh that's amazing i was having a conversation with my sister and i i had this video of me expressing my identity in the most illuminated passionate expression my the experience of like me at maybe my like finest most fine-tuned core it's just an expression of absolute delight and self-love. And I showed her this. And at the end of the video, she's just like staring. She's like kind of dumbfounded. She's like, why did you show me this? And I'm like, oh, I'm making a show. It's a Disney show and this is my character. And then she's like, oh, in that case, it's really great. I love it. I, it's like, I'm showing you my becoming, but nobody really cares. But if I'm showing you my becoming, because like in a creation a show, becoming no, it's, it's yeah, it's fr no, it's then like it's, it's a project, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's like a whole. It's so wild. The perception different. That's why shows are so. This media yeah. is like, it's like a, a blanket of magic. It's like oh, life sucks. Oh, does it? Look at your life. Yeah, it sucks. Like here, put this. Now you're you're in a show about your life. Oh, my show is amazing. Like I love. Like, you know, it's just it changes people's perceptions so quickly. Yeah, I, I think like if you look at my generation, where you know none of this could exist. And I remember wanting to do a show after I was on mushrooms as a love prophet, and I I went to the TV studios and I said I need a show. I mean, this is definitely something I'm going to be doing someday. And they're like, you can't have a show. Get out of here. What are you? <laughs> What are you doing? And it seemed kind of ridiculous to me at the time, but you know, you needed, you know, the producer support, you needed the studio, you needed hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's all these things that now we do this for free. And we're doing things they couldn't do, you know, having this background in the background, which probably, you know, the 1970s was like start, start, you know, the beginning of Star Wars like <laughs> technology, right? And, totally. and now it's, it's, you can do incredible things in seconds. And so that whole generation of me and my generation where they still watch the news and if you're on the news or TV, you're a big thing kind of thing. And switching into this generation where freaking everyone's doing everything. Every, you know, no one's got attention for nobody. And you know, everyone's just 
hey, look at me, I'm just doing my thing, right? So, you know, to me, this conversation, you know, unscripted and consistent and more about what we're about to do or more about what is happening, but we're just having a conversation. And if anyone watched it, they would start to understand the secret plan. They would start to, well, Jordan and Elijah seem to be doing something. I mean, they keep talking about what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing, but they, they, they seem to know something. I don't know. I, I may watch or I may not, right? But if all of a sudden, you know, six months from now, you just sign a $30 million contract with Disney and, <laughs> and are bringing 200 shows into being, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and then they go I, I think i want to watch those those videos with sweep and jordan and samantha because what the fuck they were talking about what they were about to do but no one was listening to them you know i know i'm stoked in like three years to look back at these videos and be like this is you know we were just like <laughs> just getting by and we're just like you know Oh, it's so the the it's like I can feel I can feel so vividly into all my wildest dreams and I'm there. Mm -hmm. And it's like you know, people are like, what do you mean? It's like you can barely afford rent, you can barely afford food. And but it's like, but I'm in my passion, I'm in my dreams, and it's like just remaining there. And dedicating everything to that vibration, that potent, fine vibration of your heart and your core. And it just allows me to see so clearly what I need to do and when I need to do it. And that's the power. I don't have to worry. And I know that reality is going to transform around me because it's transforming around this. It's not transforming around me stressing out about how I'm going to make things work. It's stressing. It's, it's just resonating around me feeling passion and following what's truly important and valuable for me. Mm. Hey, I might, I want to show you something. God, this thing. I'm gonna have to turn off this. Yeah, <laughs> this invisible thing in my hand. <laughs> Much like a lot of our tools. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, it's called the Juggernaut Weekly Score Sheet, and I'm not sure if I sent mm. this to you, but it's essentially three goals a day. It has the pulse by the week. So it has the start, the setup, the build up, crescendo, ease out, connect and unify and finish. And then it has a place for the larger pulse if you want. And then basically you have a bronze goal that you get 10 points for, a silver goal for 30 points, and a gold goal for 60 points. So every day you can score 100 points. So the night before, you write in what are you going to do the next day or the next, or even as you're doing it. Like I know with you sometimes, I mean with me, I'm just, I just do the three things and I can go back and go, okay, I did this, this, and this. Um, because a lot of times I don't follow my goals. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so there's two ways of doing it if you're watching, you know, to actually say you're going to do it and do it or do it and then write down what you did. You don't have to kind of like always sort of carry out your goals because sometimes you say you're going to do something, then you go do something else even better, but you didn't even think you're going to do it. So this is then you have 52 weeks. So this is kind of like your your little barometer for going, okay, well, you know, for planetary guardians, you, you can score 700 points to your personal goals every week. I have to make a sheet that, that adds it all up. But it's just it's just helping to get um, kind of organized in terms of your goals. And then you can then I started making you know Ooh, nice, I like this nice is things. nice. So the resolution looks really high on that too. This is the, the, the time stream, um, so you, you can do readings. You can say, you know, where do I best need to put my time? You can do readings with the cards. Um, I made the, the five spaces map up, it's nice. So how do you use that? Can you give me an example of that last one? The last one? Okay, yeah. Well, this one. So I have, I, some, I, I have some most. tables set up like this and I haven't utilized them yet, so I'm just wondering how would you use this space in your life? 
Okay, this particular one? Yeah, this map. Okay, well, this is the, the five communication spaces map where the main thing is just looking at the values. So in the personal space, I've got wisdom. In the one-on-one -on -one space, I have love. In the group space, I've got humor. In the community space, I've got justice. And in the sacred space, I've got surrender. Mm. So what I really feel happening is this is getting activated in terms of the justice at community space. And that's happening all around the planet. But that's kind of like my, when I go into that community space, I feel very invigorated. I feel very energized. I feel like I have to do something about what's occurring. And that's something which if you have all the time as an activist, it's, it's just, it's too much. Right. It's just like what's happening everywhere on the planet. Like I've done a lot of activism and if you're always in that place of, of anger or you're always in the place that we need to change everything, it can wear you out. And so, you know, when you're with your loved ones or when you're just like this with one person one on one, you know, you want to be loving. You want to be uh, connected. You want to be. You know, I don't want to be blaming you for not being out on the streets or anything like that. So it's a very different space. And so then when I'm in my personal space, just me alone, you know, I, I, I really want to focus on, on really attaining some wisdom because, you know, I have to be very wise in how I deal with what I have right now. I'm coming into the world with it, you know, and it's, it's if you make a wrong move at the beginning, sometimes, you know, six months down the road, you're going to go into a train wreck. And I've done that so many times that, you know, I, I want to create good allyships with people that are solid, with people that have, you know, I, I'm finding that my relationships with those people I believed in, where there isn't forward direction, where they aren't going the same direction, they're falling away. Because I, my train is just, is, is picking up speed. And, you know, people are on the train, people are on their own train, people are flying, people, whatever, but the people are staying where they are. You know, I, I'm not going to be around them much because I'm, I'm just, I'm like fully activated wizard that's getting more and more activated as I get connected in with these people. So, you know, there's enough, this map, you know, is the, oh, yeah. okay. I think it's the prime map. This is how you organize one hour. So if you wanted to organize an hour show, if you wanted to organize a, a session, uh, it has the seven step pulse map in there. It has the five spaces so basically you would press each one of these buttons you know this would be software at some point you're either in a personal space like we're in a one-on-one -on -one space and we're pretty much I mean, we could call it friendship we could call it service business eh, it's social service business friendship intimate or family i think fundamentally in the long run this is more business because we're making a show together and mm -hmm. i mean it's probably like right now it's in service both of us are in service we're not so it's like money a, yeah, it's like it. a, we're not charging sure. money. So it is more of a service feel to one-on-one. -on -one. So that gives the context to the type of conversation. Now we could map out what we we're going to do ahead of time, or we could actually analyze it afterwards and go, wow, we went from this to this to this to this, because here's all your conversation types, here's your values, and here's your your choice lenders. You can actually program each segment to five minutes or 10 minutes or, or 15 minutes with a specific conversation type. Totally, yeah. And so we began to do that with the Earth Manifesto team. Um, on Thursday, I'm in a mastermind and, and they're figuring out if they want to build a shared knowledge community. And there's like 12 scholars, 13 scholars that are all you know, potent in their own right. And I presented my stuff a couple weeks ago and they're kind of wondering. I'm saying, let's build a share knowledge community. You know, what else are we gonna do? And everyone's kind of, I think I gotta present this week and come up with kind of like a plan. So I'm gonna present them with an actual, very detailed way of organizing the meeting. So um, each each group or people I'm connecting to, that you know, you, you just gotta read the need of the moment, you gotta read what stage they're at, you gotta read you know, kind of like, are they a fit? You know, am I, you know, I'm not going to spend time anywhere where there's no fit. I'm not going to spend time with people that are not interested in these tools. Like it just is not interested, right? I'm not here to socialize anymore. I mean, I'm fully into the vision. 
So, so to me, the, one of the biggest things for everyone is, is you, you have to know, you know, where you're going and you can tell if people are linked to it. I mean, if you're passionately committed going towards this direction and you want to make your shows, uh, you're going to draw to all the people who want to, and you want to send messages out to find the people. Um, but you also, you know, you don't, there, it, it creates the parameters for, you know, are you going to spend time with people? Like, do you want to go to a social gathering, you know, for three hours, hang out and talk about, you know, whatever normal people talk about, or do you want to spend three hours editing your show? You know, it's like at some point, you know, you don't have much time. And the first thing that gets, is going to get cut out is going to be your social time because it fundamentally doesn't usually amount to much. Mm hmm unless you're, you know, socializing with loved ones and having a good time. But to me, I'd, I'd rather be performing or I'd rather be putting on the event. You know, I, I just, I don't want to be in the audience anymore and I don't want to participate in things that are kind of weak. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally feel that. It's like anything that I do needs to be done with my whole core. And if, I, if I'm not connected to my whole core, then I need to take a step back and find that core because there's no point in moving forward if I'm not connected to my core because I'm creating basically a faulty product if I do. I'm creating a rickety bridge. It's not building out of the, off of the foundation of my heart if, I, you know, if, it's, if it feels like small talk. You know, it needs to have purpose to build off of and to be sustainable. I think we're coming to the end. Um, quick hour, right? Yeah, it was quick. We started a little bit later. Oh, I think it was just 45. Um, I have a question though. Could you give me a definition of like your vision for like a shared knowledge community? Well, I mean, I mean, it's basically 144 people that commit to creating a new paradigm economic structure. So how that's going to look, you know, the details, you know, will come about. There are sort of details and processes with that, but it fundamentally, you know, it, it's it's the people who go, I don't want to participate in the old paradigm anymore. I want to create something new. I don't know how to do it. And I'm willing to, you know, participate with an open heart and an open mind. Um, but, you know, people that, to me, they're very committed to their craft. They're very committed to their own self-development. They're not looking for just a job anywhere. They're not, you know, they are passionately committed to the evolution of our species and consciousness and are willing to look at their own shadow elements are willing to learn are willing to you know navigate because it, it's not going to come like this it's not going to come real easy uh, it may you know it may come real easy who knows but you know I, if anything i've seen with humans is they come with their baggage they come with their presets of, of beliefs and they come a lot of times with a critical mind that does not allow the space to get the vibe good enough for people to really start to experience a, a higher frequency of human cooperation. And, um, yeah, definitely. If you're structuring the event, because I know you ta you've talked about dancing needs to be a thing, you know, in the outdoor in, in the forest, mm -hmm. um, um, doing. Um, like a synergizing what's could, what are can you just me what like walk me through the elements of like events like in in community events where where you're performing or speaking but what kind of what does that feel like or what is what can somebody expect coming to one well, of these events? well i think you know let's say it's a weekend let's say you're looking at a weekend workshop and you can have the parameters of the workshop and let's say then you have the seven sessions friday night saturday morning saturday afternoon saturday night Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Sunday, Sunday night. And what, what I saw was having different configurations, like maybe the Friday night might be, you know, 36 groups of four, Saturday morning might be uh, seven groups of 20, um, Saturday afternoon could be 12 groups of 12, and then at night, everyone's together in 144, the next morning you're like in dyads of 72 groups of two, and then, so the number is important, and then you would have a process that they would go through, but what they would be doing is experience, oh wow, here's me with one person, here's me with four people, here's me with 12 people, here's me with 20 people. And each one of those are teams in the shared knowledge community 
And then to see that, okay, well, holy shit, I mean, one, it's very organized. Two, you know, <laughs> these are freaking amazing people I'm here with. Three, when you change the configuration so much, it really changes how we're going to communicate what we can do. You know, and this is without me adding in the combo types, without me adding in the programming of the space, without me adding in the costumes, without me adding in music, without me adding in the feast, without me adding in, you know, the depth of the fun when you get people into such a situation building to that crescendo Saturday night where they just peek it up on the dance floor, uh, hopefully. And then, you know, at the end of the weekend, 144 people are going, we're family, man. I mean, we're, we're connected. And then we move on and they're left behind to <laughs> figure it out themselves. <laughs> but they're left behind to like, whether it's weekly meetings or, or you know, it's, it's just a seed just got sprouted. And after that, you know, you can, you know, you, you got to kind of let people do their thing for a month or two. Or, and then you come back and maybe do it again or you go online with them. It depends. I mean, to me, you know, at some point, you know, with the, the way numbers are going, it looks like we're going to have online, you know, downloads to 144 people at the same time. Like Zoom calls, which may be a small team talking, but then 144 people are watching and then they're going to go duplicate what happens. Because now, and in Zoom, you can, you can break out. You can take everyone and then break them into teams of four. Like Zoom is, you know, it's, it's just we have this technology now that we didn't have before. And it's freaking amazing that you and I can talk like this for an hour for free, load it up onto the internet, have the whole freaking world watch, put it on a distribution stream where your, your people can see it and it doesn't cost anything. You know, that's the, the biggest pain in the ass in so many situations is, you know, things that should be free, you got to pay for, you know, things in the community, like the buses, you know, nobody should be paying for the freaking buses. You, know, you wouldn't have all these cars everywhere if everyone was on the buses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it could have been done, but no, they go, okay, we got to have it as a profit center. But if you look at the whole ecosystem and go, okay, these things we're making money on, these things we're not. And, you know, these things are private and these things are public and, and have more intelligence around the design of it. Because all we've done is moved from this colonization system that has always been there just to frick the people. And now, now we have this pretendness that has changed. Because you can't get away with freaking the people. The people don't want it. Now we got our own media. You know, the news can't give us this BS anymore about what's occurring. So, you know, we're in the middle of a fundamental huge transformation because the people, you, you can't suppress 8 billion people and you can't suppress hundreds of millions of like middle class, very intelligent, very resourced, who just lost, you know, massive amount of wealth. 40, you know, all those people wiped out in small businesses. These are people who worked their whole lives, paid their taxes, do good things for the community, and they just got, you know, wiped out. And when they find out that it was actually a scam, that it was actually designed, you, you just can't do that to people and not think there's going to be some blowback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're entering you know, the mind calendar basically is telling us until September of next year, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And then we're going to come out the other side at the end of 2021. And that's when we're going to start to come back more into more positive approach. So, I mean, what we're doing, you know, pro it, it isn't going to be probably like as the, Phoenix, you know, the Phoenix is burning and we're coming out, like we're coming out with solution, but it's going to get way worse uh, before it gets better for the masses. For us, I mean, to me, we're just entering into higher and higher creative unit of states. Yeah. Uh, you know people will want to be in but if you're trapped in fear uh you you got to process your shadow totally yeah yeah and for me it's all about making that process safe you know because that's what has to happen and it's not like the work happens after we process the fear we need the work is processing the fear and then we can live our dreams and have comfort and and unconditional community love you know mm -hmm without discrimination. And what stops us is the fear and is the insecurity. So like my main goal is just to, to basically make a safe environment, a safe connection to self, to your own, um, make it feel safe to explore what you're afraid of, 
explore your fear and explore your insecurities and then do it collectively and do it in a way that the community has each other's backs. We have each other's backs. If you slip, we're not going to condemn you to death. If you say something that was programmed by this society, that's like off putting to people, we're not going to throw you in a cage and boycott you. We're going to look at that like a chance for us all to learn something new. And we're not going to like <laughs> just rip people down because they said something, you know, that, that we're afraid of. We recognize our fear and we use that as a, that lesson, uh, that as a lesson to collectively learn. And when we can do that, fear won't hold us back anymore. When we can look at things that are uncomfortable, but have collective safety and peace to mm. be able to, what do I really think about that? How do I really feel about that? Then we're gonna develop this community understanding of, of peace and collective love. Yeah, well, very well said. I miss Samantha. I mean, I, I love this. Uh, yeah. we, have, we have been in a diet for a while, and the, the triad's very different, uh, but it's, uh, you know, both are beautiful. And, um, and I think we're at, we're at the ending here, but beautiful talking with you. Great to hear of your continual strides forward. And, uh, you know, the plan is, is uh, in full force. In full force. I'm really excited to apply the 20, the four, um, the one, four, and 20 into my work as well. I think okay. that structure, structure, and structure. I and think I'll, that's. I'll really send cool. you, uh, I'll send you that. I would suggest, I mean, this cost $25, but it was color printed. <laughs> we talked about this. We talked about this. Yeah, do send it to me. But we talked about this like, oh, it's been like two a month and a half now. And I've been, every, like every week, I try, how, how can I apply this? And I try to set these goals, but I cannot meet them. And I'm like, well, okay. Well, no, no, but I would suggest so, this thing. Like, if I'm, no, no, I try, I, I try okay. to. Okay, yeah. no, I, I suggest this. Different then. Okay. At the end of every day, you look at what you did, mm. and then you choose one as gold, one as silver, bronze, and just write it down. Because it, it's also keeping track of all your things that you're doing in the order that you're doing them, which you know, for historical reference, might be very interesting to look at. So that's a different yeah. way of doing it, and that will that will match how you're doing things. Totally. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really. <laughs> Um, because it, then you see, like, I had a 20 day calendar of the wall once and I was doing the same thing. I just started putting on everything that occurred by the end of the month. I went, Holy shit. You know, so many beautiful things, so many incredible, you know, this is part of that invention. That's that meeting with the person. And that's like an, it's goal. Like it's, it's, it's like we have such a insane assessment of our day by our wage or our lack of a wage of going, okay, I didn't make any money today. But fuck, I designed a whole new fucking TV show, you know? <laughs> it's, totally. it's like if someone was paying me, that would be $5,000, but they aren't. So, but the value, you know, the creativity that you're doing, this just gives a kind of like a little point start. Because one day you may go, I didn't do anything. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I just, I need to honor that. And on this day, I, you can actually say, you know, okay, I did a goal, but I didn't do anything else. And so it's just tracking your productivity, tracking how you feel about what you're creating. And you are the one who's, mm -hmm. who's interpreting it, nobody else. But it's just as a planetary guardian, at the end of the month, you go, hey, I got 2,800 points. And, you know, someone else got 700, someone else got 500. And you're going, holy shit, you know, Jordan's fucking 2,800 every month, man. What's he doing? And, and maybe you can pop it up there and go, this is, this, is how I, this is how I assess it. And it just may be, you know... I danced for an hour and that was my goal or, or, you know, I, I took 20 videos and somebody else go, well, I only took one video. And, and so, you know, there's just certain, you know, I don't think people realize like with someone like Ramayan, you know, his creative output level, you know, or your creative output level, you know, it's just like you're working with 27 shows with seven of these and there's 350 possibilities occurring and you're working on 10 of them and someone else is just, I just created one scene in one show, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not to say one's better or worse, but it's yeah, just yeah. saying that artists at some point, if I'm popping out 
you know, 50 paintings a month on a very high level and you're popping out two, you know, you might just want to ask, you know, how do I do that? You know, like artists should share their knowledge. You know, how do you do that? Like sometimes it's just a little trick that you go, hey, this is how I do it. I, I do the same color on, on all the paintings at the same time. I don't do one painting. I do 50 paintings at once and I do one color on each one and the person go, I've never thought of that. Maybe they wouldn't want to do, but then they go, they try and they go, oh fuck, this is amazing. Totally. Yeah. Anyway, I, I have to go. <laughs> I know yeah, we can talk talking. forever. I'm excited for next week when we have Samantha back too, because I love our dynamic all together. It's, it's fantastic. Okay. Great seeing you, Jordan. Really good talking to you too. All right. See anyone watching? Remember, it happened here.